Welcome to quarantine life. Welcome to a hot August evening. It was the last few days have been over 90. Honey, it's not August yet. I know you want 2020 over. Yes, but don't you all too? I mean, my gosh. So it's been a hot August. So hot, my mind is a bit confused and melting. It's anyway. July 22nd today. And as you can tell, we are home. We have been home since our return from Alaska last September. September. You know what, the disco, she's parked in the garage. She's winterized still. This is July. She's still winterized. <laughs> and I don't think uh, she's gonna get unwinterized because all of our 2020 plans canceled. canceled. Done with. So with being home, we have enjoyed the home life. A lot. And uh, I know we talked a lot about, you know, we wanted to get a boat. Well, we got a boat. We got a boat. I've been tied up in that for a little while too. So a that's a project. future video coming out soon yes. of what we've been up to with the boat. But I, we, Thank Gary, you, me. it was a group project. But it was your, your crazy chicken lady idea and then I had to make it work. You may have heard me in the past say I loved my chickens prior to going on the road. Yes. Yeah, it, it is nice to have fresh eggs. And being home as much as we have been, we, I... I decided for us to get chickens again. Against my better judgment. <laughs> so with Gary's wonderful help, we built a the, little chicken little coop. Chicken coop. Li the little chicken coop back there. Yeah, the little one. Yeah. <laughs> we say it's the Biltmore of chicken coops. It's pretty awesome. But this video is going to introduce you the build of the chicken coop. The reason why I want to do this little intro is because I have a feeling we're going to get some new audience members on building chicken coops. Right. And if you're wondering who we are, I'm Stacy. I'm Gary. And we are Powhana Travels. Also known as uh, the gurus of RVing to Alaska. Yes. We run a small group with RVing to Alaska. And that too was canceled this year for all those people wanting yep. to go up. No Alaska. So um, this video is going to introduce you to our build. Um, it's a little extensive, a little long, but at the end it's very cool. You'll see it all put right. together and yeah. the movement of the chickens. And so it's a little departure from our uh, normal content. Uh, this is kind of like a, uh, a home thing, what you do at home. And I'm uh, a little so, rusty. Yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's, you know, we're, we're here. So this is what we're going to do. So, uh, we hope you, know, you enjoy, enjoy our it. home life. And uh, we are here and loving every minute of it. And we uh, chose, a, chose a good year to be home. I guess so. We wish you all a uh, safe and healthy 2020. Say spirit. And, um, oh, spirit saying hello. Say she, hi. She wants, she, want, she wants some of this. She wants beer. She wants some, it's right here. She wants some beer. So without uh, further ado, we'll introduce you to the River House Hen House. Well, welcome to the River House Hen House. And this is an old outbuilding that has been on the property for 20 years. And I decided to convert it into a chicken coop. This is the building. Uh, it's roughly about 20 feet by 10 feet. And in its day, it held all the pump equipment. That's what's here. I've taken it out. Uh, for the ponds that used to be on the property. When we built our house, we uh, tore out the ponds. And so this is the old piping here that I cut out. And you can see it here in our, our garbage pile. Uh, some of this is not garbage. We're going to try to resell, such as this uh, filtration system here. Uh, it's worth a couple thousand dollars. So, heck, if we can sell that, that will cover the cost of converting this to a chicken coop. But here we are inside the building. 
excuse our construction mess at the time or right now to catch you up we've been working on this for two days this bench was already here this is what we use to work on our pumps and such um, we've taken everything out that's pretty much garbage and all the pumps um, our leftover pumps are going to be stored in this shelving area I am going to build some cabinet doors to hide it so you don't see it. And then over here is where all the pumps were. We cut those all out and then over the past two days, my husband has built me this wall here. And we raised the coop floor 30 inches off the ground. and. This area here, it's nine and a half by five feet, will be the chicken coop. Now the reason why I chose to do a raised floor chicken coop is because this is a confined coop. I wanted a place where um, I could easily access and get all the bedding out and the litter. And what I did is I measured my wheelbarrow which stands 28 inches tall. So I built this so I could basically bring my wheelbarrow in, put it up against the wall here and just sweep in or with a large broad broom, uh, reach back and sweep all the litter into the wheelbarrow to make easy changing of the bedding. We're also going to put vinyl laminate flooring on the floor here so it will make it easier to just sweep everything out. So again this is the coop area. We have cut out framing. You can't see it's behind this. This is where our chicken coop door will be leading to the outside. Um, once we get everything painted then we will cut out the actual door um, also over here are my nesting boxes i got these from north 40 uh, it's called rugged ranch um, pretty cheap they're 35 dollars for a triple and normally you're supposed to put screws in the back here but i instead went and bought hinges and this way I can access each nesting box and collect eggs super easily. So I've got three there and three down here. Today's plan is we are going to, in this wall right here, cut out and frame in another window so we can have cross ventilation in the coop. And then we are going to paint the entire coop. Uh, my husband has a spray painter, and so we're gonna paint this barn white in here. Uh, not only is this gonna be a chicken coop, but it'll be a little she shed for me. So I can come down, play with the chickens, be with the chickens, and be comfortable. And here's the hubby. Hello. He's got the window in hand, and that is our next project. Well, there you go. We have a hole for the window and already it is cooled down a couple of degrees. It's gonna help the cross ventilation so much. All right, we're about four hours later. And as you can see, we have the window in. And currently right now we are working on framing out the interior wall inside the coop. The hubby just finished my nesting boxes and I'll flip the camera around so you can see what we did. All right, these are my nesting boxes. As I said earlier, I got these at North 40, which is an old big R. Um, $35 for a triple nesting box. It was 
pretty warped. Um, also, I installed it a little incorrectly, so the husband fixed it. But I bought two of these. And then what we did is, as you can see, we built out our floor by an extra foot and we mounted these nesting boxes. So it, the square footage in here is still five by nine and a half. Um, with this, we built a little perch so the birds can come up here and then hop into the box without problem. We also raised it up off the ground just slightly. So exterior bedding doesn't um, get in there. And from the back, as I said earlier, let me move this. We put hinges and so now I can easily access from the back to collect eggs. So I'm really happy with this. Um, it is stout. I mean, this would go through an earthquake without issue. Um, not that we have earthquakes, but we're working on the exterior interior wall now. And we got a sliding barn door um, attachment to do our interior coop door. So we're working on getting this figured out and connecting to the rafters. Well, it's a couple days later. We took a couple days off for Independence Day and now we are almost ready for paint. The hubby um, trimmed out the window. He also finished out the rest of the framing. I'll turn this around to show you. All right, so as you can see, he trimmed out the framing there and on our barn door, he closed this and we now have a wall there. So all the walls go up a total of 16 inches. And then from the top of the wall, we will put hard wire cloth to uh, the probably that rafter there. I'm not sure if we're gonna go all the way across in the roof that's undecided. If we don't, we'll just make sure to wire off this rafter here so they can't get over into the human side. But all in on, all in all, we're getting closer. You can see how the barn door works. And then uh, this is the paint we're gonna be using. I checked online, it is livestock safe. It even says so right on their cans. This is barn white, which we plan to do in the interior of the coop and for trim on the exterior. And this is barn red, which we will do on the exterior of the coop. And I'll do some accent colors and possibly the trim on the inside just for contrast. My little girls are getting an upgraded brooder for the remainder of their time before they get free in the coop. A friend of ours loaned us this trough, water trough, and I built, I'm halfway in the middle of this build for the lid, but basically I put it on hinges so I can open up and easily access. I don't have to worry if they try to jump out. I still have to put the chicken wire on the top of there. And then of course I have it on that side. This should also keep the dog out. I think if I just put a weight over the middle board, she doesn't even try to do like open doors. So I don't see her going for the chickens, but they are definitely outgrowing the dog pen that I had laying around. And so they'll definitely be excited for this new coop, miniature coop, a little brooder. And I made them a little roosting stand. So, and that, <laughs> um, my husband teased me because it's totally not symmetric, but I'm gonna put the water on that to lift it up and off the ground. All right, I got my brooder done. Elevated food and water. They seem to be enjoying it. They've got way more room. As you can see, I can easily access. And they can access their food and water. I think it's a win-win. 
All right, here goes the first start of the new paint. All right, everyone. Well, today I think is day six. Um, yesterday we completely finished painting the inside. We did two coats. There was some bleed through. Um, this was really only one coat, but inside two coats. There was some bleed through, but it's a chicken coop. It can't be perfect. I am currently working on putting up the hardware cloth right now. And Gary is prepping the building for the exterior paint. I'll take you for a quick spin inside and then we'll watch Gary put on the first of the red barn paint that we're gonna put. All right, so today's project so far, I installed hardware on the egg boxes. So they will be secure and the hens can't like fall out the back. So two of those. And as you can see, we have hardwire cloth. Uh, and I'm about halfway around. So it's going 36 inches from here to the top. And then a little bit on the wall and then all the way to the stud up there. I think I'm gonna leave the rafters open because you never know, they may wanna roost up there. If it becomes a problem, I can always add it later. Uh, we do have the hard wire cloth, uh, hardware cloth on the outside of the window. So I'm not putting it on the inside. And also that allows me to be able to open and close the window from inside. And as you can tell, this is where I'm at. Another addition that we did today, Gary installed vents at the top of the gables. There's one there and one there. Another thing we did is we bought a box fan to help circulate when it's super hot in here. And I can tell you it, it, all, it is already making a huge, huge difference. Um, I'm not sweating as badly and it's staying pretty cool in here. So that will be a welcome addition. We may just have to build a little extension off of the uh, header there uh, so it can sit in front of the window. But right now it's just sitting on the, the countertop and it's working just fine. Use the mess, but we have laid out the lumber to make the outer walls of the coop. And uh, we're gonna stack them three. So bottom, middle, and then top. It will be six foot two inches to go with the wire, exterior wire that we bought. But this will be the run for now. I originally had planned to also extend it on this side of the stairwell. But for now, since I only have six ladies, we're gonna just keep it on this side. It's still a rather large run and we have room for expansion if we want. Another expansion that I have going in my mind is a skywalk coming out of the coop right about here and a bridge leading across to this wall. And what I'm planning to do over here is build a garden. And if I net this in and with some fencing, I could let the ladies out to go out and scratch and do their business in the garden when appropriate. Um, do I have to do this? Well, one, I gotta do the garden. And if I do the garden, then I'll probably add that addition. But it's just something in my head that I thought, hmm, a skywalk to the garden. That's kind of cool. As you see, we have two windows that we have to block off to prep for paint. So the hubby's doing that now. Number two, he's working on. And here's the first one that uh, he's already got blocked. Here we go, barn red. Hey, 
It's the end of another long day and we have made some major progress. This coop project is almost done. Let me turn around the camera and show you what we did. All right, we got the flooring in. This is a waterproof laminate vinyl we got at Home Depot. Uh, it was on sale 25% off because it was a remnant and it fit the space perfectly. In fact, we have quite a bit left over that we could put maybe in the human side. I don't know, we'll see how much we have, but we got all the painting done on the inside. Uh, we did the window there and the shelving. And then out here, I painted the outside walls, uh, put a little decorative stripe on the egg box. We've got the cabinet cover doors here painted with red around the trim. I still haven't removed the paint tape. Uh, other than that, let's go outside. Outside we have the trim painted first coat of white. I, if I wanna do it right and make it look good, I've gotta do a second coat. Uh, I may wait for a cooler day, uh, but for now, it meets my stamp of approval. But again, one of these days when I'm not lazy, I will come out and do another coat. But uh, it looks freaking fabulous. The hubby sprayed the fence posts. This will uh, make the perimeter of our chicken coop run right in this space here, which is about I'd say 16 feet by 10 feet, so they'll have plenty of room. And then once my automatic chicken door comes in, it will come out of the coop at right about here. And we will make maybe an elevated space here and then down a ramp for them to exit out of the coop. There's our dog Spirit checking things out. Uh, the husband's getting a dump run ready. Uh, this is all of our old pump equipment that used to fill this space. And uh, yeah, it is coming along. The chicken should be moving in in a couple of days. It's another day and uh, we're gonna keep working on the outside perimeter, right? We got a load of more stuff. Yeah, the depot has gotten a lot of our money this last two weeks, but uh, money, business. <laughs> okay, the depot's gotten a lot of our business. Today we went and bought some roofing material to put on the outside run so they have some shade and some protection from the weather. As you can see, yesterday I got uh, the chicken run uh, door done for them, and I'm gonna work some more on that today. But uh, yeah, it's coming along. As you can see our perimeter here for the outdoor run. They're gonna have lots and lots of room. For six chickens, they're gonna do really well. All right, well, we are getting really close to chicken time. Um, I apologize, I haven't filmed for a couple days, so we've made progress without really showing it uh, on video. But today we are running our watering system. We have watering cups that we're gonna install six inside here in the coop and six outside. So we just drilled a hole from the exterior that will come in and it will go all the way across the coop here and then out to the outside run. Uh, we've done a lot with the outside run and I'm really excited to tour that area with you soon, but uh, this is what today's project is. All right, here it is. Check this out. Hit the up button. And then the chickens can go out. Yay! And at night, this is on timed on a sensor or manual right now because the chickens are still babies and I don't want them out unless I let them out. I have it on manual. 
There it goes. Pretty cool. All right, so we got the watering system in. It's just a half inch PVC pipe going from the outside from the water source, coming into the coop. And at the last minute, we changed it out to chicken nipples. There's six on the inside and then it goes outside. And outside we have some watering cups. So let's go over there and I'll show you what we did. Okay, out here in the run, we have the water coming out, going below our little chicken patio. And then it L's and comes down to chicken height with six watering cups out here. So this will be continuously fed water uh, direct from our sprinkler system. While we're out here, I might as well give you the tour of the outside run, or as I like to say, the, the chicken playground. Okay, I still have one left, one thing left. I'm gonna do some outside trim in white around the chicken door. This is the chicken guard uh, door. It is fox proof. Uh, so as you can tell right now, it's down and there's no way it will come up because it has little latches that latch it down. We have a small ladder, 45 degree. I set the, um, ladder rungs about six well there's four inch space in between each rung it goes down to a nice chicken patio as i could like to say it's about 28 inches off the ground and then they have another ladder coming down i left this space open i want to put a little sandbox in here so they can do their dirt baths once they eat down the grass Again, here are their watering cups. And then I built them, I did this all by myself, I'm a little proud, a picnic table. So when I bring them out greens and treats, I'll feed them on the picnic table. And then the playground portion. They have two swings that I made with leftover two by fours. Uh, one here, one over there. They have a roost that's about four feet off the ground with a little ladder that they can jump up to get up there and then someone's really wants to be high and uh, tall they can go up which is about to my neck uh, height and then they have this rope that they can play on uh, all in all i don't think our chickens will be bored uh, we completely enclosed the coop um chicken wire i'm sorry hardware cloth up 32 inches and then four feet of the two by four wire and then two by four on the ceiling and then here in the rafters we went back to the hardware cloth so no raccoons or other critters can get into the run so this is all hardware cloth then the two by four wire, and then again on the bottom hardware cloth. So they have good square footage to play around outside when I let them out. And with the chicken guard door, they can uh, be automatically let out either on a timer or daylight sensor or manually. All right, the inside of the coop, let me go to wide mode. Uh, again, this space is nine and a half feet by five feet on the inside. Here we have the chicken guard. I will use either a long broomstick or just crawl in. This does support me uh, to set the timer or change batteries when necessary. They have a deep shelf here that they can stand on, play on, roost on. They could roost up in the rafters if they really want to. We did put hardware cloth here so there's no way that they can get out or a predator in we put roof vents in I just built this roost um, I used a uh, two by two that was already painted I know a lot of people said don't bother to paint them because they just poop on them so it's just the one I also put this on hinges so I can lift it up, I can hang it from the rafters, and when it's time to clean their litter, I can just lift this up, attach it on a string or bungee cord, 
and then uh, sweep all the litter straight out the door here to the wheelbarrow. I have blocked off their nesting boxes for now since they're only six weeks old. I won't introduce them to their boxes until they're laying. But the boxes I did uh, put these latches on so I can access them from the back so I don't disturb them. And there's three boxes here and three boxes here. Uh, as you can tell, it's still kind of a mess. We will clean this up. This is final day of uh, chicken coop build, but we're getting there. Tonight, we're gonna introduce the chickens to their coop and they'll live in here for about a week before I introduce them to the playground. Here's our water supply line, the white line here. Uh, this is the water supply line for the chicken feeders. This is tapped right off of our, our uh, feeder line for this uh, box valve here. So it's a, it's a pressured line uh, all summer long. And then it's also, in the winter time, since we ha we're in a freezing climate, we have to drain our sprinkler system. So I put this ball valve in here. And then down below on this T, there's another, there's a plug I can, I can untwist and manually drain this um, feeder, feeder line. So we don't have to worry about freezing and breaking in the wintertime. And then this also takes out the uh, worry of blowing out the feeder line with the high pressure sprinkler blowout system. That pressure could actually ruin these valves. So we went with this alternative manual draining method, which I think will work just fine. It's not that labor intensive. I've got a drain on this end, load point drain on this end. And on the other side, outside, we'll show you in a minute, another low point drain. So. It should work out pretty damn fine. As you can see, we ran along the side of the coop and then up and in. So uh, as Stacy had showed you before, the feeder, the water, water line inside the coop continues all the way through the back wall and out here. And we, we needed a water system outside too. So we continued it out here. And we got the little, the little cups with the yellow nipples in there, they just pack up those things and the cups fill up with water. Really kind of cool, really kind of convenient. But also, on the end of this line, I put a cap. And this just allows me to drain everything out. And when I pressurize the system, it also allows me to flush everything out. So, as soon as we get the water on, I'll uh, flush this system out, and then we'll turn it off, put the cap, cap it up, and we test it. Put the corn is well Yeah. Good, good, good job. <laughs> All right, well, we turned on the water and the force of the water was just a little too much for the chicken nipples. Uh, so we have decided to go back to the watering cups in here. I still have the nipples, so um, we're also getting a water reducer to cut down the flow. Um, so between those two, I think we'll be golden, but for now we're gonna go back to the watering cups trial and error we'll see how it does but right now it's almost moving day hey, so i think <laughs> wow i think we finally got the water situation figured out so our our main pipe coming into the coop actually the the the, pr the water we have coming off the sprinkler system is running at about a 60 psi 60 pounds per square inch which is actually a pretty pretty good amount of water to run your sprinklers in your yard we can rerun multiple, um, like five heads on a, on a line at one time, five big spray heads on a line at one time. So it's a lot of pressure. And then we reduce that down to half inch and then run it through the, the coop to, uh, to the waterers. And we were almost blowing the waterers out of the fricking pipeline. I mean, it was just, it was, they were, they were spraying, they were leaking, they were having a problem. So we initially went with this uh, 25 PSI reducer right here. This, this, they were telling us it reduces the pressure down to 25 PSI, but that's not the truth. It reduces 25 PSI from the starting level. So we started at 65, so we reduced it down to 35 pressure PSI. That did better for the feeder, for the waterers, but it still was kind of, they were, they were blowing water out of, them, out of themselves. So we had to get crazy, and we went to Home Depot again today, and we got a manually adjustable water pressure regulator here. So you can turn this screw in or out and that adjusts the amount of pressure that it allows through the, the, the uh, line. 
So we've got it down to probably three to five PSI. And it's just a trickle going through here. And basically we're doubling the, doubling the regulators. So we got the, the, the main guy doing the big job. And then the little guy up here kind of just finishing, finishing things off. So let's go around the coop and we'll take a look at the watering cups and see how the flow is now. Here, here's the outdoor watering system. Uh, like we are at the other corner, so the water line comes in through the whole coop, out that wall, down and over here into these feeders. And you see you got the little yellow trigger down here. You tap the trigger and it doesn't even spray water out, it just trickles water out, which is just perfect. That's what you want. You know, previously we would hit these ye little yellow triggers and we would get freaking sprayed with water. The pressure was so high. So now we've got it reduced down to where it just trickles out and it keeps the cups full. You can see a little air came out of that one right there. So that's not going to scare the chickens. All they got to do is just touch the little yellow dial and they got water. And we have this same system in the coop with the cups and all that. Same thing in the coop for their watering systems for when they're in there. So I think, I think we succeeded. It's going to be a good thing. Time to lay down bedding and introduce the girls to their new home. Wow, that's all you, baby. Have fun. See ya. Okay, so as you can see, there's six waters yeah. here in the coop. I, we started with the waters, we went to nipples, and then we went back to the waters. This just... I like nipples! <laughs> we felt this was just going to work better. So we have the triple feeder stocked with food and ready to go. A little uh, jar of grits and the roost is ready. All I have to do is put litter in and we will bring the girls down and they're gonna spend their first night here in the River House hen house. All right, the litter is in. And so I'm about to go up and get the girls. Let's go get them. All right, little ladies, it's moving day. We're gonna move you down to the coop. Are you excited? I'm excited. And I'm sure Spirit's excited to have her garage back. All right, time to move into the new digs. All right, I got my trusty friend Tracy with me and Sophie the driver. And the girls are all loaded up and ready to go to their new home. Uh-oh, here's Spirit. All right, first one. What do you think of that? I don't know. I don't know, Mom. Oh, that's funny. The head, he won't go any, or she won't go any closer. <laughs> Hi, baby. Oh, there you go. Thank you for not looking me. So this one is Uno. She was the first we grabbed out of the brooder. Oh, good girl. You ready to join your sisters? Calling for you. Two more. I think you're almost all reunited. Oh my goodness. 
You want to say hi to the camera? Say hi. That's so funny. It's like the head doesn't even move. The body moves. The head's like, nope, I'm not getting any closer. All right. Let's join your sisters. put a few of their beaks in the waters. I'm just going to sit here for a little bit and watch and see if anyone goes there on their own. But they're just exploring. They're like, what is this? All right, the girls have been in the coop now for about a half an hour. They're still just exploring, getting used to their pecking order and this new digs. As you can see, the sun's about to set. I think they'll quiet down. I did put some um, mealworms, little snackies over by the water, hopefully to um, entice them over there. But uh, they're just flocked to together and doing pretty good. We also installed a ring camera so we can peek in. You can tell there's a little blue light on right now. That means my mom is watching. So, hi mom. Hi ladies. Did you enjoy your first night? But just so you know, I opened your door. And you can go outside and play if you wish. Hi ladies. morning coffee and waiting for them to figure out that they can come outside. <laughs> come on! Good job ladies! It's a whole new world now. If you like this video hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more adventures from the River House. As always, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up down below. Leave us a comment and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. We thank you for watching. Until next time, Pow Hana! Hana.